What's up guys, welcome back. This episode will be a little different than usual. It will cover several different days and locations from a little road trip across southern Thailand I recently went on together with my girlfriend and good friends Oscar and Steren. We explored mangroves by day and night, took a boat out to some marine caves on an island, and explored the lush rainforests of Phuket. We found a great assortment of different snakes and had an absolute blast. Enjoy the episode. All right, we are once again at one of my favorite spots with Oscar, Steren, and Spoon. Links down below, and we are going on the mangroves to look for mangrove snakes, retics, and pretty much whatever else we can find. So nice. All right, getting our boats ready. Let's hope we don't have another sinking incident. What? <laughs> I don't know, but all. Because Oscar has his pretty expensive camera. All right, let the search begin. It's a bit sunny today, so we're getting some harsh lighting, but I hope it'll be all right. Anyway, it shouldn't be long now till we start finding some stuff. This spot is usually really productive. All right, got our first snake, and it is a retic. Don't know how well you can see it up there, but he is right in the center there. You can see that dark mass curled up in the middle. That is a little retic. Not a hatchling, probably about a meter and a half or so long, but this one is of course way too high to reach, so we're probably gonna keep going and hope we can find one that's lower down. We really should have came here at like a time of day that wasn't as sunny, because it's just contrasting so harsh on the camera. Alright, got our next snake, and it's actually a double find. There's a rather large mangrove snake in there, and then just in the same tree there's another juvenile retake. We're probably not going to be able to get both, but we will try to go for the mangrove. And there, oh, there goes the retake. Nah, it's okay, we go for the other one. Or if you can grab it, that works too. Yeah, try to grab it then. I'm stuck. Alright, I got it. Yeah. You got the head? Yeah. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> yep. oh. I just got a shower of Oiga Melanota poo. <laughs> Maybe I can drop it to you. Some my bowl, some my bowl. Some of that. Very nice sized one too, quite healthy. And unlike last time, this one does not have a meal. So we, can so we can actually handle him, although. He is not happy, and the shed is already starting to come off quite a lot. And he's missing the tip of his tail, as you can see. All right, Oscar, get down here. All right, so we just wrapped up taking a couple of photos. I'm probably not going to handle it. He is in shed, so I'll wait for the next one. Um, but yeah, really good size one. Ready to let him go? Yep. Just gonna let him swim off. Doesn't bite me. Yep, he's trying to bite Oscar. <laughs> and off he dives. Fantastic. Possibly we'll see it re-emerge somewhere, but I doubt it. Oh yeah, I can see it. Re you can see the the grasses over there slightly moving. Yeah. yeah. I see it. Wow. That was so cool. <laughs> All right, let's get another one that's not in shed. All right, I just saw a monkey up ahead in the tree. I'm gonna try get some video now in case it's gone when we get there. But you can see... Wait, I lost it. Oh yeah, there, right in the middle, you can see him climbing across and making his escape as we approach. The crab-eating macaque, I believe that is. 
Or is it the short-tailed ma- no, it's a crab-eating macaque. Oh, and he looks like he's chasing a crab at the moment. Alright. Not actually that shy, he's just... Just chilling in there. I don't know how well it's coming out on camera, it is in a quite dark spot, but there's two of them there. And I'm sure there's a few more around as well. Alright, so we are about to go on a little boat tour. It's going to take us up the river, out onto the sea, and to a constellation of islands that is quite far offshore, where we hope to find some Laticauda colubrina, the banded sea crates. But we'll be happy with pretty much just about anything we see, so let's go. Here's our trusty boat, and later we're going to swap over to some canoes once we're there. just made a pit stop out at a restaurant on the water like we're literally pretty far we've been driving on the boat for about an hour from the mainland and they just have this little establishment of houses on stilts out here on one of these little islands and they have a little fish farm I'm not sure if these are for seafood in the restaurant right here but I don't think they would be eating these fish there's literally some like fish you would normally see in an aquarium around in here, just in the side of the restaurant here. And if you're wondering where they came from, they're catching them right there with hand lines. Anyway, we are going to go grab some lunch and then we're going to go to a cave apparently. So look forward to that. No snakes yet so far. All right, we've just arrived on our little platform where we're going to transfer from our motorized boat to these little canoes and we're gonna explore the island just behind us which has some cave systems and the guide said they've seen snakes there before so we're gonna go have a look all right so we've just entered a little cave in this limestone karst and it's pretty dark in here good thing I brought my video light which I was actually debating whether or not to bring but I'm not sure if there's going to be sea crates here because I don't see any coral. This is all just limestone, but in areas that have coral in the water and rocks on the edges is usually a good place to find sea crates. You can see every now and then there's these large openings, but these rocky ledges would seem to be quite good. So the guides said they've seen snakes here before, but when we showed them a picture of a sea crate, they said no, they haven't seen that. So I'm not too hopeful, but you never know. We did see a monitor lizard a moment ago, which disappeared before I could get the camera out. All right, you guys won't believe what we just found. We just saw a monocled cobra. I couldn't even recognize what it was at first because I was caught so off guard. But holy crap, guys, there's a monocled cobra in this cave, just literally among the water's edge, in a cave out at sea. All right, let's go. Let's get, I'm probably going to have to turn the video off to catch this guy, but... Find a way. Alright, sorry for bad filming guys, but he actually just disappeared in a little rock crack. I'm going to turn off, try get him, and I'll get back to you if I do. He got it. He got it. He got a monocle cold inside of the cave. All right, we just got it down. Have a look at this. I don't know exactly what to do from here, so I'm probably going to grab it by the head and we're going to try get somewhere that has shore. Oh, when he's trying to bite the boat, we don't want to sink. So I'm going to keep it away from the boat, but this is just so cool. All right, guys, unfortunately, we weren't able to get the catch on camera because I had to climb onto the land there and we are in a cave system with like vertical walls. But yeah, we got it. And we're gonna try to go somewhere that we can get daylight and on land to get a better look at it But have a look at this weird coloration on this cobra Anyway, we're gonna get somewhere we can get better footage and we'll resume in a moment 
All right, we've actually just came to shore and so that we can actually work with it because handling a venomous snake on a boat is not ideal. So we've just climbed onto some little tiny ledge next to the rock wall here. I did restrain it because getting off the boat with it, I needed both hands to unpack my camera and stuff. But while I've got it restrained, before I let it go, I want to just give you guys a look. This is such a weird looking snake and I'm still like shaking of joy. Um, but have a look at that. Like, Maybe I'm exaggerating a little, but those eyes look like they are a lot bigger in proportion to head size than any monocled cobra I've ever seen. And also, if you look from the top, the head is like really pointy, almost like a wrinkles from Southern Africa. And if you look on the other side here, it's got some like pure white scales. And this does not look like scars to me. It looks like some kind of genetic mutation. Uh, almost like a leucistic scale or something. You can just see there. Really, really strange, but of course it is a monocled cobra. But yeah, you can see, well, it hooded up for a moment a bit ago. It does have a monocle and we're in range, but we're literally far out at sea on a little island constellation with some caves going through it. I'm gonna hand the camera off to Oscar to get some video once I let go. All right, I'm gonna let go so we can get... Ooh, he is quite feisty, and he's not very prone to hooding up, which the species in the wild typically is. As you can see, when I saw him, and even when I grabbed... Oh, he just bit himself there. So he's not hooding, but he definitely is up for biting. So I'm going to be extra careful, especially since we are, like, at least an hour away from shore right now, out on little canoes. Would not be a good place to get bit, but have a look at this. This is my second wild monocled cobra I've seen this year, and this is definitely a once-in-a-lifetime encounter to find a species like this living on an isolated limestone rock in the middle of the ocean. I really wonder what they'd be eating out here. I'm guessing probably birds that are nesting in these rocks, and perhaps fish and even like crustaceans and stuff, but it's really weird. We did see a baby monitor lizard not long ago, so that's probably another thing that it'll be feeding on out here. But have, it's just so weird to find a monocled cobra in a marine habitat. Ooh, uh, did you see that? Did you get that on camera? I think so. Mouth open, he just turned around ready to bite. But he doesn't really hood at all, which is super strange that a cobra which doesn't hood usually implies that they're placid and not really trying to bite you, but this one will come around mouth open every chance he gets without hooding. Just definitely some very unique behavior. We're definitely going to do some scale counts and document everything that we can as good as possible because this is, I would say, quite a significant discovery to find a monocled cobra out here. Very twitchy as well. It handles differently to monocled cobras I've caught on the mainland. And I'm guessing that would be because out here they have different predators and different things they need to adapt to. And it was living actually inside one of the darkest crevices of the cave, so that could be a reason why its eyes are slightly bigger, adapted for life in the dark. Because other than these vertical limestone cliffs, there's really not much habitat out here for them. How weird is that? Anyway, we're probably going to turn off the camera and get some more really clear photos of this guy. And then release him. Alright, we're just coming out from our limestone cave area which was just back in there but this mountain is literally the same as all of these other mountains you see just random scattered mountains and we are actually really far away from the mainland even all of this land you see there is all just isolated islands and all of them have these vertical cliff rocks where you would never expect something like a cobra to live I mean this is literally these tiny isolated rocks in the middle of the ocean. Well, not in the middle of the ocean, but quite far out at sea. That is incredible. Very happy with the cobra we had found, we headed back to the mainland to continue herping in the mangroves by night, as well as the rainforests of Phuket where Lucas, another friend of mine, joined us. Little did we know what awesome snakes awaited us later that night. All right, first snake of the night, not even two minutes after we started walking. Is this beautiful little, looks like male perhaps? Mangrove pit viper, Trimorosaurus purpurio maculatus. And as usual on this spot, they often sit on these boardwalk railings, probably because small rodents and geckos will actually use these as 
pathways to walk along. Quite nice patterned one for this area. Usually they're quite dull around here. This is one of the prettier ones I've seen. Must have recently shed. Alright, we've just moved him or her off the path so we don't end up stepping on it again later. As you can see, very nice, reasonably well-behaved individual as well. Give you guys one last look at her. Very nice little one. Really vibrant patterning, as I think I've mentioned already. Let's see what else we can find. Alright, next snake, another mangrove pit viper, this time with mud on its face. A bit smaller than the last. Anyway, let's see if we can get a crate. Shining. Alright, we just got our first banded crate of the night. Target species acquired. Oscar going in for the catch. Oh, he's on the move. Got him. Nice catch. Wow. Look at this. Gorgeous. Wow. <laughs> How do I bring it up? Uh, you can pass it to me if you want while you climb. Wow. Hey, we got one. Okay, but how can you come up? Insane. I'll oh, climb shit. up, don't worry. Okay. You're right, he is a bit muddy. Gorgeous animal. Nice colors on this one. He's not the biggest though, he's definitely on the smaller side as they go. I just love how on these, opposed to on the other crates, they do have the banded venter, mm -hmm. which the Malayan crates do not have. Alright, so we've just had a play with it. This is actually one of the smaller banded crates that I've seen around here, apart from two hatchlings that I found, but Normally they're quite a bit bigger than this, although this one is very laid back as you can see, not even trying to be defensive whatsoever, and he's not even hiding his head as much as the species typically does. Usually they'll do that quick twitchy thing where they hide their head directly under their body, but this one is actually really relaxed. He's not the chunkiest one ever, but I wouldn't really say he's unhealthy either. Um, but yeah, as you can see, very nice little snake, which has no intentions of biting whatsoever, which is true for... Oh, and there's the video light. Um, Alright, so the video light just cut out mid-sentence there, but what I was saying was that it's true for most crates that generally, as you can see, they really are very placid snakes that will not bite unless you seriously do something wrong, but if you're just gentle, you can literally handle them like horn snakes. Not saying that's what you should do, but anyway... We are low on battery in the camera as well, so we're just gonna let this little guy go. What a beautiful snake. Alright, back down into the swamp he goes. Right up there, you can see right in there is a female. Trimurosaurus pucatensis, the Phuket pit viper, right in the center there. And while we were sitting looking at this one up on the back there, we noticed another one in situ right on this rock here. It's quite unusual to find one sitting out in the open like this, not resting on some vegetation. We did take a couple photos already, so she did slightly change her pose, but this is the exact rock we found her on which is really neat. And she's also quite heavily banded for a female. The females of this species are usually more green than this, whereas the males have the really strong brown banding. But some females do have some banding as well, and this is probably one of the more banded females of the species that I've seen. Uh, we haven't really done any handling yet, so I'm gonna see if I can get a hand on her, and then we're not gonna spend too much time with her and keep going. All right. So, first contact with this beautiful little girl. Ooh, hello. Usually this species is a little bit bitey, especially the females. But she doesn't look to be that bad. She's currently crawling onto my lap. Come back here, miss. There we go. 
she is actually quite well behaved. I've never done this before with that species. But sometimes things just happen. Anyway, let's see if we can... Alright, there you have it. Lovely adult female Trimurosaurus pucatensis. If you go back through my archives, you can probably find another video I've done with this species where you can clearly see that the last female we caught was literally the most defensive viper I've ever seen. But this one, not so bad at all. She's just curious more than anything, but I am still going to be careful. Let me actually get into a slightly more comfortable seating position. There we go. Have a look at this beautiful girl. What a beautiful snake. And she's almost got some like blues in between some of the scales. I don't know if it's picking up on video. I mean, there's some slightly blue skin between the scales. But I suspect that might not be showing up too well on camera. One of my favorite of the green vipers that you get in this country. And it's amazing how well behaved this individual is. There's not a whole lot known about the venom of this species because they are endemic to Phuket, only a very small geographic range where you can find them. So of course there are not many bite records, if any, but chances are good that the venom is quite similar to that of the Thai Peninsula Pit Viper, uh, Tremurosaurus uh, sabahi fucatus, because that is their closest relative, and the venom of those is not all that bad. You probably get maybe a bit of necrosis, severe swelling, and a whole lot of pain, but it's not life-threatening. <laughs> All right, enough of that tomfoolery. But yeah, we're just gonna let her go back right on her little rock here where we found her. And we're gonna see if we can find a male because the males are literally like three times as beautiful. Like, I don't know where I got the number three from. Sorry, I'm a bit tired, but they have way more intense banding than the females. But it was really cool to find a female this chill because the last one, I really didn't get to handle much at all. Are you filming? Oh. I see the picture when it was right on your face. All right, we're gonna leave her here, give her one last pat goodbye, and we're off. All right, just got this beautiful little cert. This could be, I'm not too good with my certs. This could, however, be Certidactylus pucatensis, the endemic cert from here. At a glance, it looked pretty similar to Lecagoli, but when I touched it, you can feel that it has a very rough, warty texture, which I don't recall Lekagold's geckos having, so this could very well be the endemic one to the island. It's quite big, too, and it's retaining a lot of that banded tail which normally only juveniles have in certs. I love those big eyes. Alright, I'm good to let him go. <laughs> and right next to this gecko, Oscar just spotted another really cool gecko. This is some species of Snamaspes, and it could also be Pucatensis. I believe there is an endemic one here as well, but I'm not sure about that. Either way, these are diurnal, which is quite unusual amongst geckos. And you can see by those nice round pupils that they have, they're much more cut out for the daylight, and now that we're shining the light on him, he's becoming a bit active. They're very quick. Alright, uh, Lucas just spotted this little Ahetula Prasina, which is very cute. I love how he's just sitting slap bang in the middle of this leaf right here. And he seems to have woken up. Got a little tongue flick going there. Nice little light juvenile. Anyway, just gonna leave him there though. We've got bigger fish to catch.
We're hoping to get a waggleride tonight, which typically hangs out in these taller trees. All right, another double find. Up there, way up, we've just found, wait, I can't see it on the camera now, there. A juvenile or male waggler's pit viper, but he is really high. We could probably find a way to get him down, but considering these guys don't move a lot, we're gonna leave him there. We've marked the spot with a stick blocking the path. So if we don't find one that's lower, we can come back and try and catch this one. And then just a few steps down the path, you can see in there, we've got another oriental vine snake, a Hetula prasina. Bit bigger than the last, but still pretty small. Still that white morph. When they grow up, they turn green in this area. Seems to be a good area. All right, literally minutes after, where is she? Oh, right that is so good, and she's low down as well. It's funny how I was literally just saying a moment ago that I think this area is really good for Waggleri. Then we got the juvenile male back there, and this nice female at a catchable height right here. Typically the species rests pretty high, so a lot of the time when you find one you're not able to get it or you struggle getting it really much, but this one is pretty much at perfect height to just lift down with the hook. Hell yeah! Let's do it! Let's do it! I have a long hook. Oscar has a long hook. Let's you do too. this, man. <laughs> you can do the honors, you found it. I just love their heads because they have like the widest, hugest triangular heads you'll ever see on a viper. Oh, she's good size. No matter how many Waggleri you find, it's always so nice to see them. Alright, point her here. Have a look at that. What a gorgeous creature. Have a look at this beautiful snake. Let's see what happens when she encounters my finger. See, she doesn't want to bite. Just when I move, she will... Okay, she seems to be calming down a bit now. Let's see if I can get her onto the old hand. No, no bitey. All right, she hasn't struck at us yet, but she was looking in a way that I wouldn't be surprised if she did. Man, I've really got a thing with finding defensive waggleri lately. The last female waggleri I saw was actually the most defensive one I've ever seen. But this one, you can see, is... Okay, she's not as defensive right now anymore, I guess because she's gotten somewhat used to being handled. A lot of snakes, once you first catch them, will be pretty defensive, but then once you work with them for just even like two minutes, they will become surprisingly mellow. And it's no different with her. As you can see, she is just gently inspecting. But I am, however, going to be extremely gentle and careful with her as not to spook her. But yeah, this species is a venomous pit viper, although unlike most other pit vipers, these are primarily neurotoxic. So when they bite you, it doesn't do a lot of local damage. You won't get necrosis or extreme swelling like you do with some of the other arboreal vipers of Southeast Asia. Uh, they are primarily neurotoxic, but it's not really potent enough to cause significant damage in humans, so you might end up with a slightly swollen finger, a little bit of pain, and maybe a headache or something, and some nausea, but really the bites from these are not that bad. And I think a lot of people in the venomous keeping and even herping community don't realize just how mild the venom of these are. I know of several good friends who've been bit by this species, actually, and pretty much in every single case, by the time they reached hospital, the symptoms were already going away on their own. And I've also read a bunch of papers on it, and I can't find a single record of a severe bite from this species. Doesn't mean that I want to get bit, but it's good to know that despite it being a venomous snake... What are you doing, ma'am? <laughs> Alright, she's really calming down now. But isn't, like, Wagwari just one of the most beautiful snakes? Like, look at that intricate pattern. And then the males are like half the size, 
and completely green with some white little spotting. Anyway, we're just gonna set her back on the tree where we found her and go home as very happy herpers. What a little beauty. All right, let's go. All right, so we just lost a triangle keelback. We actually saw three of them in this pool, but somehow we were not very graceful and they all shot off and hit in this dense vegetation stuff. So we got a stick and started poking around in it. Didn't get the keelback, but what we did get out of it was this really cool little turtle. Have a look at this guy. That is cool. Not common at all in Asia to find turtles in the forest like this. And usually when you do see turtles in Asia, like in city parks and stuff, it's invasive red-eared sliders or Chinese soft shells or something. But this little guy is native, so really neat to see this little one. Actually, he's not that little either. He's pretty decent size. And ow, those claws are sharp. Nope, yep, 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 yep. ow, ow. That is sharp, <laughs> Yeah, it is really sharp. <laughs> there he goes. Look at his tail as well. Bloop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so remember that little waggler eye that we saw really high up? I actually just climbed the tree, managed to get it down, and we've got him right down here on a little stick. And he seems to be pretty calm, so we're gonna get him out. Oh, is this stick attached to here? I am shaking a bit from climbing this tree. My hands are just so exhausted because it was really high up. But you can tell this is a male by the little spots. If this was a juvenile female, it would still be plain green like this, but it would have these little uh, stripes rather than spots. But yeah, what a fantastic little dude. As you can see, calm as ever, as the species usually is. Um, Hello, sir. Anyway, very cute little snake. And we are gonna let him go right back onto his tree. I'm way too shaky for this. All right, let's go. All right, right before we finish the night, we almost got another double find. Here, we finally got a beautiful male Phuket Pit Viper. And as we were looking at that, Lucas just spotted on the floor here a huge snake skin. And this thing is really fresh. It's still wet even. And you can tell by how narrow the ventral scales are that this is definitely a python. I'm thinking it might be a blood python, but we're trying to find the headpiece to confirm that. All right, so we were unfortunately not able to find the suspected blood python, but we did get this beautiful little male. No, sir. We do not do biting here. Oop. Okay, he's giving me some looks I don't approve of. I'm gonna abort mission. <laughs> mission abort. Careful, that's exactly how Rupert got bit. Oh yeah? Yeah. With the phone doing that? No, with a leaf. Like a <laughs> tiny leaf. <laughs> If you'd like to support me and my channel further, you could always pick up some of my merch or check out my Patreon. Links to that will be down below. Till next time.